see if this is working. I have no idea. That's pretty cool. Okay. I hope this is working. That's that's fun time. Well, if anyone's actually watching this and this is actually streaming, um, hi, my name is Kelly. Uh, in AmpGuard, I am known as Aloma Two Trees, and I like to make handmade and also digitized awards. Um, I have been asked to show how I make awards. So here is a little live stream on how I make handmade awards. Um, it's going to be in three parts. Uh, the first part, which is today, will be about how you gather your resources to make the awards. And the second one will be on taking those resources and using uh, programs like Photoshop and Illustrator, which are the programs that I use, to build your, your award, how you want to have it. And then the third one will be on uh, actually taking that, printing it out, and then putting it on your, your paper and transferring it and then painting it. Um, I did this, and I can do this one live because usually awards are given to specific people. Uh, I really like to do titles and I like to do the higher level awards, but this one is actually was a request to do one, there's going to be a Bardic for Neverwinter, so whoever wins the Bardic competition will be getting this. So I'll be actually doing this beyond this first step. Um, I can show you some of the work that I am doing. So let's get started. Let's see how I can move my Google slide. Okay, so the first step will be finding source materials. And really, you don't need to have any special tools for this. Um, sometimes Pinterest can be a, a dark, deep rabbit hole that you never leave uh, looking up stuff. So drink some water. It's going to be a long trip. Um, some notes before you start. Uh, it is not cool to steal. Uh, if you buy it, or if you ask them to use it, that's totally different. Or if the images that, or information that you use is copyright free, creative use licenses, um, then you can use it. Um, if you are going to be entering anything into a termy, it is always good to cite all of your references and say, hey, I didn't make this, I didn't design it. This is where I got the information from. Um, I do have a few links for some good places to get copyright free information. There's Unsplash, Pixabay, and Pexels.com. And I use those a lot um, because there's, you can't always make everything original, uh, but they are copyright free. Um, it's always cool, again, cite your sources. Uh, there's also another way that you can get images. Uh, you can, this is what I really started off with, Google image search. But when you do the search, you want to be able to go to tools and then uses rights and then creative commons license so that you can use that stuff. And you're gonna find a lot of stuff that's on Wikipedia, to be honest, uh, a lot of artwork. So Wikipedia. Okay. All right, so. Um, there is a website that I love to use right now. Uh, I'm finding a lot of images from it. There, it's a uh, digital scriptorium that has, they have copied digitally a lot of manuscripts and a lot of them are just beautiful, gorgeous manuscripts. Uh, and they're copyright free. They're, the people who made them are long gone and they're very old and they're available for use. Um, it says so, and there's like, the, look on the copyright uh, page, there's a little bit like using these images. They don't, they're pretty sure that nobody holds the copyright to these. So uh, that is a great resource. In fact, the, the piece that I'm going to be working on will be from there. Um, I also have links to some Pinterest boards. Um, my friend and Knight, uh, 
Linden has a Pinterest board for scribes. We haven't really kept up with updating the Pinterest thing because Pinterest is kind of a hole that you fall into forever. Um, I don't know about Linden, but me, I haven't used Pinterest really in a while. Uh, too many ads, and I find it's really hard to find the sources for things. But I linked to my own Pinterest board there, so if you want to use that, go for it. It's in the handout and the link. Um, and then there's also the Ampart Facebook Scribes, Scribes Guild <coughs> on Facebook. They're a great resource for not necessarily using the art for references, but using as a rough uh, as just a, a resource for like, hey, how do I do this? Hey, what's does this look good? Is this dumb? I don't know. I need a lot of people to tell me if my stuff is dumb <clears throat> or not. So, um, uh, and then again, always mention your references in any tournament or show you are entering, and just like keep them because it's it's a good idea. All right. Um, so, oh, oh no, go back. Finding heraldry online. So I have been collecting Ampguard heraldry for a bajillion years, um, and I actually have them on my website. Uh, and you can, it's specifically updated for people making awards and making gifts and things. So this is specifically to the kingdom one. I do have other heraldry, but if you go ahead and click on that link, you'll find a, just a metric ton of, of kingdom and park heraldry. You can also find heraldry in the orc. Um, if you look for people specifically when you're making an award, uh, the patron that says, hey, I want this award made, can you make it? It's, it's usually, sometimes people put their heraldry in the orc and sometimes they don't. It's kind of, if they do or not. Uh, the AMP wiki is pretty good, uh, especially good if you're looking for finding personal touches from people like, this guy likes to be an orc, or that lady likes to play a pirate, and you want to gear your award towards that, uh, the AMP wiki is a good place to start. Look, look them up, look up their family, look up the houses that they're in, and try to gear your award towards that. Uh, but they're also a great place to get heraldry, so you can put that on the award. Um, there's also a really neat resource called Traceable Heraldic Art, uh, and you can want to check the copyright for that again, but it has all, it has a lot of pieces to help you build heraldry. So if you know somebody's heraldry is something complicated, but you don't have an actual image for it, you can use that to help build it. It's a really nice resource. All right. And then finding a word verbiage. A word verbiage. I hate this part. Like, I seriously, this is the worst, worst, worst part of this. Um, so I wrote a little Word doc, and it's not completely finished, but it helps you. You can take parts of it and be like, oh, that's what I need to say here in this type of reward. Um, you can go ahead and use that as a reference. It's all up on my PDF there. Uh, and then I also have a award verbiage randomizer. Uh, I kind of broke down the award verbiage as like introduction, what you are what this person is getting the award for, and then like sign off. So it takes those three pieces and it kind of gives you an option for each one. You can use it, you cannot use it, and it might help you. Um, I absolutely hate doing award which is the worst. Uh, and then uh, there's a cute, cool resource um, for, I think that's Cade, uh, phrases for scrolls. So um, that will help you. You want to get as much as you can <laughs> from these things. Um, and then, so, once you collect that stuff, and you're going to want to put it into a folder because you're smart and not like me, put it in a folder on your laptop. You also want to find fonts that will work for that. And you don't, might have fonts already on your computer. That will be nice, and you might not. Um, here are two res resources that I have. Uh, I use Defont and 1001 free fonts. They're all free fonts. Um, I like going to like calligraphy type stuff and I have about a million billion uh, fonts that work that way. And then I use a program called Font Viewer. Um, I don't know a lot of people that actually are graphic designers and have like a font program, but I 
have always had something like this. Um, it's a nice little program. It just lets you see all the fonts that you have and you can put sample text in that in that and it will tell, show you what it will look like. So if you're looking for something very specific, uh, for instance, I really love when W's are just two V's put together. You can get that and put that in there and you'll find the right kind of font for that. All right. And then, let's see. So once again, uh, I want to talk about adding personal touches for it. Uh, usually when you get contacted to make an award, I'm going to call that person your, your patron. That person will say, hey, I need a order of you know, a tenth rose at, and I need it on this date and it's for this person. Um, so you want to go out and you want to find things, I think, that are like, that's important to that person. So you can add more things to it. You want to have you know, if it's going to be a rose, put a Tudor rose. I love Tudor roses. You don't have to. You can do whatever you want. If you want to have, like, this person's getting a high level Lord of the Warrior and they want to put a sword in it, put a sword in it. You know, you want to have symbols that will, are in the award that you can carry on. All right. All right. Um, so I was actually talking to Lyndon about this earlier and I wanted to, she came up with something that, when you have awards that you want to ask the people that are asking you for awards. You want to ask what styles and the themes the recipient likes or what styles and themes our com commissioner would like included. They want to ask about what colors are wanted and what colors are not. Um, in Florida, we like neon. Um, if they suggest a specific type of art, uh, they <laughs> a style of art, then they need the thing they they think you mean. So sometimes when they're like, this person really likes this, but what they really mean is they like this video game, like they really like Vikings, but they really like the show Vikings and not actual Vikings. And so those things aren't always the same thing. So just be clear. Um, if there's anything that you can include to make the award more special to the recipient, uh, like if they have a special pet or hobby or a particular piece of garb they like. So like, Head in first and touches is cool. Uh, and then what size, that's important too. Um, I've been making awards lately that are eight and a half by 11 uh, because I can get a frame at dollar store. In fact, actually, I think that's on Amazon. Uh, no, I don't. Anyway, frames at dollar store. I'll bring that up in a minute. Um, so you want to think about who's giving the award. So you want to have the per title of the person giving the award in it be like this person said this person was cool so is it the monarch the regent the champion some person that can give awards um, uh, you want to have space for the person to sign but that's not always true uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic so it's not always a good way to have a good thing to have somebody be able to sign a piece before it's actually given to the recipient um, Sometimes I ask the monarch to like take a photo of what their signature is like, and then I just recreate it. Um, so you put that on there. And then the date. Uh, the date's kind of weird. Um, I actually have an award that hasn't been given out, but I made in May because the award, we don't know when we're going to have it in person, and it's more important for that monarch to have it given in person. So maybe not put the date on. Um, it's also a cool little like web page that uh, was made. It, it has amp card time on it. So if you want to put like, here's my super serious amp card time on it, there's that link for that right there. Uh, and then you put them in a folder. Uh, you put them together because I'm not smart and uh, you should do that because I'm not. All right, and that is mine for today. Uh, we're gonna be talking next time about using graphics programs. I'll be using Photoshop and Illustrator, um, which I understand are not, people don't, can't usually afford that. So uh, I'm lucky, it's what I do for a living. There are programs that you can use that are like Photoshop and Illustrator, um, there's GIMP, which is free, and it's just like Photoshop, and then there's Inkscape, which is also free, uh, which is just like Illustrator. Illustrator, Photoshop, and Illustrator. Yeah. 
So that is my presentation for today. Oh, I do want to show you. I wonder if I can show it to you. This is the file that I chose I, uh, after the Dragon Scriptorium. I really hope you see that. Um, so what I'll be doing next time is I'll be cropping this image, making it look a little bit better, and then putting in my own words and stuff. So this is going to be for a bardic competition. Um, I think it'll be cool. I'll put actual music in it. Um, I don't know music at all, so that's going to be real fun. Um, um, mm -hmm. Cool. Nah. Turn this off.